Amen. Happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's it's my uh, my lot once again by the grace of the Lord, and everybody's back for more. So praise the Lord. <laughs> By the grace of the Lord, we were going to talk about financial jubilee and talking about conform. And, um, you know, certainly as we've been talking about financial jubilee, you know, I, I trust by God's grace that you're, you're making progress, you know, in your life, wherever you are, whatever season, whatever point you are in your life. And, um, you know, often I, I want to talk about practical things, things, literal things you could do. But it's very important we understand why, right. you know, because you could be motivated, you could be charged up, and um, I got it. But if you don't know why, it's going to eventually evaporate. So it's very important to know why. Why? Why is this important? Why is this important? Even the word of God that we've been hearing for so many years, you know, why? Why? And um, hopefully, by the grace of the Lord, we can throw some practical things in here as well. But let's just go to the Lord in prayer, Lord Jesus. We thank you this morning, Lord, once again to together in your name, Father, with your people, Lord Jesus. We don't take it for granted. And we pray, Lord God, that you just bless this little Sunday school teaching, Lord God. May it go to the heart, Lord God. May it produce results, Lord Jesus, oh God, in all of our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord God, may we be able to see it, Lord Jesus, as a just a map, Lord God, to help us with the, the more precious promises, Lord, that you have for all of us. Father, we commit this day into your hands. Bless the entire service, Lord Jesus. We commit it in your hands, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll go to the next slide. So always remember, no matter how long they had been in bondage or how long they were supposed to stay there, when the year of Jubilee, when the year come of Jubilee, when the trumpet sounded, every man could go free if he wanted to go free. So you can see right there, if, if, it depends on what we want to do. If we want to go free, if we want these promises, then we can. We just need to understand. We need to understand and we need to have that fight that we talked about. We've got to have that strength to keep fighting, to keep pressing every day. It doesn't stop. No matter what season of life we're in, you continue fighting and learning what God wants us to learn. Then we can be a good example to those under us that's coming up. So continue to fight. Next slide. So when we talk about conform, conform, it means with. The word con means with, together. I mean, basically to adopt the form of those around us, to be similar or identical, to be in agreement or harmony, to be obedient or compliant, usually used with to conform to another's wishes, to act in accordance with prevailing standards or customs. Basically, it means you go with the flow. That's the easy way to say it. I'm going with the flow. And that's exactly what water does. Water goes wherever is the easiest pass. It flows right in. It'll fit whatever container, whatever mold you decide to put it in, it will fit. And certainly, you know, coming up with financial jubilee with me, I mean, that's what I did. I mean, although I was born again, God changed my life. In 1999, I was born again. But with finances, I didn't know. I just didn't know. I wasn't taught. I, I didn't understand it. So I was just going with the flow of the world. And I was learning so many things that the world has a lot to teach you now. Believe me, it'll teach you all kind of tricks to the trade. And my goodness, I thought I was just going with it. But truly, what I was used to, I was just used to the form, used to the normal flow of the world, what they did. You know, if they happen to have a little money, what did they do? They spend everything that comes in. So I was doing the same thing. I was used to thinking that way. I was used to applying my life that way. You know, just like if you think about a slave. And that's typically what the world wants us to be with finances, to be just slaves to the world. Just flow with it. Don't challenge it. Don't question it. Hey, if you can get a house with a mortgage, praise God. Thank God you got that loan. That's what you, Lord, I got approved. Praise the Lord. No matter what the interest rate is, you know, that's, that's thinking like the world. That's what it does. I can pay all my bills. Well, have you looked at your bills? Have you questioned them? Have you said, Lord God, is this what you want me to be doing? So thinking and challenging that, getting out of just the form. But I was used to that, thinking like a slave. Of course, until, as Brother Luis brought out, until God set me up. Amen. He set me up. And this is why I'm here today, because he set me up. And I was just going. We were happy. Oh, praise God, going with it. 
And then God told me, no, let's go to the next slide. The word of God, as we talked about conform, you can't help but see this scripture. And it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we know conform means just to go with the flow, but there is an intense pressure in this day to conform. Period. Doesn't matter what age you are. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you're born again. There is a pressure to conform. It's so strong. You have people with intelligent minds. They will call black, white, white, black, a girl, a boy, a boy, a girl, anything. That's the pressure. Such an intense pressure. And, and, and that's what we will. We will just go with the flow. But God is saying we have to be transformed in order to get these principles, in order for us to get up that statue of a perfect man. We have to be transformed in our minds. That means we have to be changed a different form. That picture on the previous slide, you saw water. There was water, ice, and there was steam. So we have to be changed completely in how we're thinking about our finances, thinking, oh, Lord, this is just a little map of the greater promises that you have. Lord, this is where it's a part that I have to do. And it's a part that you do, Lord, you provide my needs, but you're asking me to be a steward of this. Lord God, you have given me these precious promises, but it's me. I have to be diligent. I have to pray and read my Bible every day. I have to continue doing that. There's a part that you have to play. And as we pay, play that part, then you see God start to move. You start understanding, oh, Lord, this is what you're doing. And the devil, he's so tricky. That's why I have that yes and no. Because the devil, he is like a yes. Yes seems good. And God is like, no. And that's a shock. It's a shock to your system that God will say no. 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 You can't have it. No, you're not ready for it. No, you don't need it. And the devil comes along and says, well, yes, you can. Sure. I have a way for you. And he's been doing that from the very beginning. Something as simple as yes and no, the Garden of Eden. There you go. God said, no, you can't eat of that tree. The devil says, well, you can you can do it. You actually can. There you go. There you go. Cain and Abel. You know, Cain says, hey, this is what I want. This is what I want to offer. Satan says, yep, Cain, you do it the best you can. God said, no, no, I'm not accepting that. that that's like a rejection. It's like Brother Louis brought out just like, no, why is he saying no? And it's the same thing today. You could directly apply that to finances. If you don't have the money, if you don't have the money and you feel an urge to borrow, that is God's way of saying, no, you're not ready. You're not ready for it. Why don't you have the money? Because I'm just telling you, no, you're not ready. But the devil's going to come along and says, yes, you can. There's many ways you can do it. Many ways you can do it. You see? And we go down that path. It's easy. And then we start conforming. Thank the Lord for this loan. And you hear brothers say that, you hear sisters say that, you're like, well, I'm going to apply for my loan. Thank the Lord. The Lord is good. We're conforming in the church. Everybody's just getting their loans. We're just happy celebrating with our loans, conforming, just going with it, not even thinking about it. And that's exactly what was happening in my life, just going with the flow, just not even thinking about it. The devil said, yes, you can. Yes, you got it. Oh, my. Mm, he is something. And he's always applied that. And no gets really deep. No gets really deep. I was talking with my wife just driving in. You know, it gets so deep that it can break your faith if you're not careful. You know, we have expectations of what we think things should happen. Things should be this way. Things should go according to my plan. My, I remember raising kids and before we had kids and we would see the other couples with their little kids and we're like, as soon as we get our kids, our kids go listen. They're going to sit still. We got this. I'm telling you, how can they let their kids keep slamming the door? We're like, what in the world? Our kids go, and I would hold somebody else's kid and like, see, I held him quiet for three minutes. I got this. I'm telling you, when my kids come along, my goodness. And I, you know, I, man, I thought I was good. Even when they became teenagers, I'm like, I got, we, 
I know if I just talk right, they're going to get it. And the Lord's like, uh-uh, no, I'm going to keep you on your knees, <laughs> period, you know? And that's what he does. We have expectations, who might be your friend, who might not be friendly. Even when we pray, we have expectations like, Lord, you're going to heal them. You're going to do it. God says, no, 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 no. Not this time. Why? Because he has a plan. He has a greater plan. He's writing a story. He's writing a strip. As our brother brought out, he's writing a play. So he has to say no to his children so we can go along and fit his plan. So he says no. And all we have to do is realize, just as our brother brought out, like, Lord, you just have something greater for me. Help me to keep that faith, Lord. And in every area, he's trying to do that. But finances is just an area that he's given us that we can start looking at it. He says no to something because you don't have the money. That doesn't mean go away disappointed. He said, Lord, all right, Lord, then you must have something better. You must have a better plan, Lord. Help me to stay there and keep walking, and you'll see what he does. But the devil has done so much to just get us locked in. And as we talk about conformity, of course, you got the Internet. It's just loaded with conforming and pressuring us to conform. I was reading something about the Internet. It said, you know, what happens, we get an idea in our minds and all of the social media comes in. Right. And it entrenches you into your very idea. It locks you into your idea. So it's harder for you to come out. Just like ice, you fit it in and then you freeze it. And that's what he's trying to do. Freeze our thoughts. You want this car? He'll show you all kind of images of it. Boop, boop, boop. Pop it up. You search once. Now you got it every moment. Here's the same car. You know you want it. Hey, next thing you know, you get an advertisement for a loan. Everything just, oh, my God, he's just pouring it. And he's always done this. But now he's just doing it in greater intensity, greater intensity, because he wants to entrench us, lock us into a certain form. Go to the next slide. As I said, you know, this was me. This was with this a standard. And I, I, we set out, by God's grace, I shared a little bit of the testimony last, last time, how, you know, we were going to norm, normal, going with the flow. And um, my goodness, you know, all the money came in. I started saying, how much house can I get to the max? And uh, we got that 40-year loan and uh, should have been in bondage. Just thinking about my brother. We, the, the road that we lived on was called Bond Avenue. That should have told me something. <laughs> Bond Avenue. Yes, we were locked in for 40 years. It was supposed to be. That's why Jubilee, doesn't matter how long you're supposed to be, I was supposed to be in bondage for 40 years. But God set me up. That business, we were doing great. The first house we sold, my brother and I, you know, we were just smart. We got $10,000, about $10,000 profit. Oh, man, we were like, yes, praise God. I was really imagining, Lord, you're the next one. You're going to bless me. I'm going to be able to pay cash for a car because you're going to bless me. While we were borrowing money, we had access to borrow a whole bunch of money for these properties. And, man, I thought, Lord, this is how you're going to work it out. Lord, you're so wonderful. The Lord said, nope. No, no. Matter of fact, I'm going to sink the entire economy in real estate just for you, John. <laughs> My goodness. We started seeing that economy go down. My goodness, money going out the door. My, my, my. But we turned around and said, Lord, you must have something better because, Lord, I have paid my tithes. I have not tried to do anything wrong. And I started seeking God. And as I sought God, we started focusing on all. We lost a ton of money. Paid it off. But as I started learning the principles of God, I started questioning what I had done. Lord, this house, I question it, paid off all that business debt, accepted that challenge, paid it off. And I started looking at our house and challenging myself like, Lord, something's wrong. And this is when I started looking at, okay, man, I borrowed two loans for the house. We owed about 300 something thousand. But if I just paid that 40 years, it's going to cost me $800,000. I did not sign up for that. So we challenged that and we started taking God's principles and applying them as we read it in the Bible. I mean, we would be up. I would just be looking at it. I start talking to my wife about it. Like, I, I didn't know these things. I didn't know these things. I, I didn't know. But Lord God, since I had paid off that business loan, I started seeing, Lord, if I just took what you taught me there and I just applied it directly to my house now, 
Now, when I'm saying apply it, that means there's sacrifices. There's things that are happening. I'm not going with the flow anymore. It's hard. Well, man, every Sunday we'd be out to eat. Every, I mean, this, this was us. You know, we would just buy whatever we want to. We didn't think about it. You see, but now I started pausing like, hold on, wait a second. What's going on? And I took the principles of God. So we're going to bring out the principles once again. Let's go to the next slide. So I started learning. All right, God owns it all. The 10% tithes are his and the 90%. Okay, that's another no. If you're not hearing it, that means the 90% is not yours to say yes to everything. It's no, it don't belong to you. It's just like your tithes. You need to ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do with this? Father, what do you want me to do with it? Don't go with the world. The world will say, hey, you got 90%, especially the younger people, leverage that. Do this, do that, do this. Now you better ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do with it? Manage his resources diligent. You have to be diligent. You can't just go like water, flow with it. God has given you money for a reason. A reason. You have a job. You have assets. You have this for a reason. You have to manage his resources. And it doesn't have to be deep. You can take anything to start managing his resources. Start somewhere. Write it down on a napkin, a piece of paper. What am I spending every month? Today is the end of the month. Right at it. You got a whole month of May. Write down what you think your expenses are. What do you think you're going to spend? You know you got rent or bills, your electric, gas. You know, how much do you think you spend on food? Write that down. That'll give you an idea. Okay, Lord, you've given me. $3,000 $3,000 to, to take care of my, myself for this month. I know I make 4000 you know. Okay, I do. I got my tithes and things like that. Lord, I, I really, if I do this month, at the end of next month, I should have $500. That means I got my food, I got this. I should have $500 left at the end of next month. Let's see what happens. Now, if you write it down and you're like, Lord, whew, looks like I'm going to be short. 2000 <laughs> then you might want to pause and say, Lord, okay, let, let me really think about what's going to happen next month. Can I cut out something? It doesn't have to be fancy. You're just asking God to help you, and he will continue to build on it. That's what he's doing. He's building on the promises that we have step by step. So take that. Be diligent. Remember, money is still your time. You're working. If you throw that hour away, then it's like you're taking your life for granted. You're taking it for granted. So it should be worth something to you. Remember, patience, we got to learn to wait. That is so important. Learn to wait. God just has something better. He doesn't want you to rush out. Just because you have it don't mean you rush out to it. Some of those older ones, you're retired, you got money, you may have more assets through life. That means you may have to wait on for your grandchild a little bit longer. You know, I'm not going to do it right away. Let me see how this little girl is acting or how this little boy is acting. You know, is he acting good? <laughs> Remember those parents are raising those grandchildren, you know. <laughs> they know. You know, that child may be walking around like, I get whatever I want. Granddad is going to get it for me. You know, <laughs> you might need to put a little plug. Granddad, just give it a little time. You know, we know it's a season you get to enjoy. But remember, they're in a season as well, and they're in a terrible season with ton of influence. And they do live in a society where they think it's all yes, all yes. You tell them no, they'll say, hey, there's a way. That's just for you, daddy. That's just for you, mom. But there is a yes for me. And so we have to make sure we're late. We're showing them how to wait because God is going to ask us to wait. And God is going to say no. Why? Because it's not our plan. It's not my plan. He has a plan. So he's going to say no to them. And we don't want his no to cause them to walk away from the faith. So that's so important that we help them to understand like no and hold to those no. I know it's hard. I got kids. You know, we've been blessed. You know, we've been really blessed. I know it by the grace of the Lord. You know, but I know, God, we got to help them. We can say yes to every single thing that they want and whatever they want. We're saying yes, 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 no. It's like, Lord, they got to hear from you. If they think that, then they're going to feel entitled. And the minute God says no to them, they're going to say, well, see, the devil got me. He has me. He's going to take care of me. And they're going to go that route. Next slide. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh the rich, and he added no sorrow to it. That is nothing but the truth. Avoid debt. Avoid it. God wants to bless us. He wants to do it. But we got to do it in his time, and we got to learn to wait. He is a good father, believe me. He will hold to his no. He really will. 
and he's going to let you pay the price if you decide to do it. That's a good father for you. Save for the winter. Remember, it's coming. Save. Don't spend everything you got. That's God saying just because you got it don't mean you give it all out today. Save a little bit of that. Look at the ant. He's saying, no, you can't spend it all. The best investment is giving, giving. That's some of that he wants you to give. We know our tithes, but it's also more than that. It's giving. And, of course, it's learning contentment. That means you start learning how to say no yourself to yourself. You start learning how to say no. Like, Lord, I'm going to say no. Next slide. By the grace of the Lord, as I said, when we paid off that debt, and this is just to me, I, I believe this with, with no doubt. After we paid that debt, it was 2016, 2015, that's when I, you know, I got some money, I got a little bonus on the job after we paid off that debt, and I didn't just buy what I wanted. I knew we had that debt, so I took that money, I threw it on our mortgage, and I started getting little chunks out of it, like, okay, thank God. And a little bit after that, continued did that, and 2015, paid a little bit more. Things started happening at the job. They say, okay, we're going to let you start traveling internationally. Went overseas. On my birthday, 2016, a lot more of the house was going. I was feeling the momentum. They said, hey, we're closing down to Maryland. 2017, when we paid off that house, it was five months later. This is the truck that pulled up with the eagle on the side that packed us from Maryland to Georgia. We were debt free by the grace of the Lord. So, had I waited for 40 years, would I be coming down here in 47, 24 to 7? <laughs> so, praise God, he has a plan for all of this. But he, by his grace on those eagle, eagle wings, I like to say, brought us down here after we were debt free. Praise the Lord Jesus. Next slide. That's why I think our prophet says it so much. And I hope as you're hearing debt, we talk about debt, but it's really about cleaning up your lives. It's cleaning your lives up. It's handling in your life like Joseph, just being organized, diligent about what's happening in your life. And our prophet says, clean your lives up, pay your debts. Oh, no, man. Jesus said, get all things off your hand. Get everything right. Make ready. Get ready. Remember in the name of the Lord, something is fixing to happen. My, my, my. That is the word of God spoken to us by that prophet in 1965. Think about how long that has been for us to have these words. So it's clean your lives up. Let's get everything right. That's what God is saying. Get it right. He's waiting on us. He is waiting on us to get ready. So by God's grace, let's take these little practical things and apply them to our life. Right above that, before he said this, he said, And what are we coming here for? What are we doing? Are we coming here playing a game? Are we coming here meeting as a lodge? It's Christ. It's it's Christ can't come until the church is perfectly right. He's waiting on us. That's verse 283. So you can see what it means. Clean up your lives right in there. He's saying, get it right. Get organized. Make ready. We are. God has gifted us with the talents to do all these things, and we can do it by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Just start somewhere. Start somewhere. He will add to it. Next slide. Let's keep going to the next one. So yes and no. A prophet just said so many words. He said, don't you see where the commercial commercial world has your nose to the grind wheel? He said, don't you see it? So the world is full of it, full of it, advertisements, television, radio, newspapers. And if the American people fall for such as that, and if the American people fall for such as that, just falling for it, the devil is deceiving us with all of this. Yes, 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 yes. You can do whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. It's a way you can literally think and do and be whatever you want to be. And God in his word is like, there is a plan. I got something better for you. Let's go to, as we wrap up, I want to just share this testimony. I know I shared it a little bit. Let's go to slide 15. Keep going. Keep going. This is my dad, you know, and uh, of course my dad was in the message. And I'm still in the message by God's grace. Been through many, many battles. God told him no many, many times. And he's still pressing on by the grace of the Lord Jesus. This was last month when my brother was down and we I shared a little bit of the testimony how my dad, the place he was renting, the landlord said, no, he has to go. 
So we spent so much time trying to find the best thing for him. We went to Macon, Georgia. He still goes to a church down there in Macon, Georgia. So we thought maybe we'd go down there. So I spent all day looking for him. I spent weeks, but I spent a whole day. We went down there trying to find a home for him. By God's grace, we were going to buy the house cash. By God's grace. But we asked him, God, is this your will? Saw the nice house, perfect house. We weren't sure if this is the best thing for him, but we like, Dad, praying to God, Lord, if this is the best, then let it come through. We put a contract. The house has been available for like, it was like, a, I think, a, a month or two. The day we put it in, got the contract, put it in, they called and said, no, it was already bought. Somebody bought the house. God said, no. It's like, man, what in the world? We went to Hartwell where he lives. Like, okay, well, maybe, Lord, you want him to be in Hartwell. A house came up. We went down to Hartwell. It was like, okay, we're going to get him a house in Hartwell. Nice house came up. I went, spent time with the realtor, put in the contract, another cash offer. Came back, no. I'm like, Lord, God, we're running out of time. We've spent months and months. My dad said he's been looking for two years. You know, we've been looking. Time is running out. Last thing we could do was meet with the landlord that we knew for years. Just plead with him, basically. We don't have an option. We're done. We've looked everywhere. Every single thing we could do. Any help from the government is going to take a longer period of time. Anything. So we met, met with him. My brother came down. As you saw him come down, we met with him. Had lunch with the landlord because he knew us 25 years ago. He hadn't seen my brother. So he's really excited to see my brother, see us together. We met with him. Had lunch. I'm like, Gary, you're going to bring it up. You need to, you need to bring up the, the question. My brother's like, just, just wait, wait for a little bit. We'll do it outside after we'll finish eating. We went outside. He talked to the landlord. He said, well, you know, we've, we've done everything we can, everything we can. And we just need a little bit more time. Basically, what are you saying? The landlord said, no. I mean, it was like shock. I'm like, we will buy the house from you. You want to sell it anyway. We will buy. It's like, no, he has to be out. This week, I mean, by the end of the month, he has to be out. I mean, you're standing shocked, stunned, like, all right. He said, okay, great to see you guys. Great to see you. We walked away. We walked toward the vehicle. It's like, well, God must have something better. Must have something better. I said, well, let's go by this house. This, um, this, uh, this is called a, a personal care home that they told us months before they've gone out of business. So we didn't even think that was an option. I said, let's just go by. Maybe we can talk to the lady. She seemed really nice. I was actually thinking about other things. She was going out of business. I'm like, oh, it'd be great to hear about our business. So we decided to go by. There's no other options. We're done. We don't know what to do. But we go by. We knock on the door. She comes to the door. We start saying, yeah, well, when you're going out of business. And she's like, well, tell me what's going on. She said, well, tell me about your dad. Come on in. My dad moved in there couple weeks later he's been there by the grace of the lord getting the best care really enjoying you putting on weight all of that amen 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 praise the lord our prophet says he said but you see what it is the musicians can come on up i said but you see what it is it's god it's god and his mercy providing sometimes a thing gets real low where we wonder how it's going to be that's us just accepting god's no accept it it seems like it's impossible, but God has already provided. He just holds it up there, drawing interest on it. You see, to give it to you. God has a better plan, and he knows that he has. He just have a better plan for you. God bless you all. Praise the Lord.